Hello and welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, hi, I'm Cassidy. If it's not, thanks for always tuning in. I was not gonna record this video today because I did not want to get ready, but I thought, really, why do you guys care? No one cares what I look like. They really just care about the books I talk about. So today we are doing my September, yeah, September, my September wrap up. Uh, if you watched my October TBR, I said I finished my September TBR. I did not. I lied. I did not. I said I had a week left to finish my one book. I, I didn't finish it. I read other books instead. So I have not read My Best Friend's Exorcism yet. I am on page 67 only. I'm just going to carry this on into September and hopefully read uh, I'm just going to carry this on into October and hopefully read it. I also didn't finish Saga, I won't lie, but I really had no want to finish it. So I'm just not even adding that. I will read it at some point, just not October. Okay, I read seven books this month. I think I read over 4,000 pages and that was insane. I had a wonderful reading month. I read only chunky books, I swear. So yeah, it was a really good reading month for me and I've had a really good reading year in general. I've only had like six books that were under three stars. All of my books have been three and above. I've given it a lot of four stars this month. I mean this month. I've given it a lot of four stars this year and um, I'm enjoying that. I'm, I'm knowing, I think I finally kind I have an idea of the books I like and I've been reading them and that's always good because I don't need to waste time on books that I don't like because there's so many good books out there. Let's start. Someone came to say hi. Hi, I hear you. The whole YouTube world can hear you. Okay, um, it's really weird to me that I read this. Shh. It's really weird that I only read this like a month ago. I feel like I'm ignoring him so please ignore him too. Um, I feel like I read this a long time ago, but the uh, first book I read was Empire of Gold by S.A. Chakraborty. This was supposed to be for my newest pick uh, in Bookopathon, my newest book pick. Uh, but since I had read uh, Kingdom of Copper in the month before accidentally, I switched this to a uh, book that had a color on it. So that's what it is picking. There was a little bit of shifting on my TBR, obviously, because... I read one of my September TBRs in August. Empire Gold got five stars from me. I loved this series. This is a work of art. The storytelling, the world building, the character, this is just all incredible. And if you have not read this series, please pick it up and read it. It is, it is a very heavy political fantasy. Like there is a lot of politics and scheming, but it is incredible. And I think that it's easily digestible. I will put this on a beginner friendly fantasy book for sure. Uh, if you don't know City of Brass, which is the first one, is about Nari, who is a human girl who finds out that she is actually descendants of the devas that used to run a city called Deva Blood, which is why she is has the power to heal. And um, we follow her journey as she figures out that she's a half-blood and what happened to her ancestors that ruled Deva bad. Yeah, you're just following that journey and then and then you are following Ali, who is the second son to the current king of Devabad. And you follow his journey as he's like the problem child and you really struggle. You really follow him as he struggles to do what he essentially thinks is right versus what his family thinks is right. And he doesn't want to let anyone down, including himself, but also his father. And yeah, it's just like their journey and there's a lot of scheming that happens because you are talking about ruling families. So I loved it. This was pure gold. Empire gold. Pure gold. Get it. Haha. <laughs> The next book I read was Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Mess. This got three stars for me. This in Bookopoly was um, a community shelf. I always get, get, I always get community shelf and chance cards mixed up. So it's the one where there was a prompt and my prompt was an author who was under 30 at the time of writing. Uh, I finally dived into this world. I loved Akatar when I read it earlier this year. This book is not Akatar to me. I do not love it as much. There was definitely some plot holes, but I cannot resist a competition and I loved the competition in here. And Sarah J. Mass is just a guilty writer for me. Like she is nowhere near the best technical writer, but dang, does she make you feel something for these characters and I just want to go on this journey and know how it ends. Um, I'm invested into their lives and it's just like guilty. Like I just want to eat it up, but I don't necessarily um, read it. I'm reading it for the journey, not necessarily for the technical aspects. 
Uh, Throne of Glass, if you do not know, this is a, this follows Selena. This follows Selena Sardothian. I think that's how you say it. She's an assassin who was caught and she spent a, ye a year in one of the world's like dirtiest, filthiest prisons where pretty much they send people to die in the first couple months and she somehow survives and that is one Prince Dorian uh, finds her and he asks her to be uh, his champion and so he she will get her freedom if she competes to be the king's assassin and if she wins in the competition and really this is a love story it's a love triangle that's not really a love triangle between selena kale and dorian but also if you know things that happen in the future books which i've been spoiled through tiktok there's there's some some spoilers and you'll understand more why it's not a love triangle i don't know i, I did enjoy this book it was a good ride um nothing special nothing unique you obviously kind of know how it's gonna end with the competition like it is a clear ending it is so predictable and the writing isn't the best but i'm here for the the story if that makes sense and then after this because i can't help it and i like to binge read i went out and bought all the other books and red crown of midnight by sarah j mass so this is going to become my um most recent uh purchase for my book upathon tbr and i i also gave crown of midnight three stars i enjoyed it a lot less than throne of glass the writing style really aches me in this one she Sarah J. Mass really writes POVs. Um, you'll be you'll be reading Selena's POV and then it'll switch for like a paragraph to one of the guy's POVs. And as you'll see in the next book that I read, I like that typically, but in this book I hated it because you really were only switching POVs for them to be like, oh my god, Selena's so cool and unique. Like you were just getting them like whining about her and loving her. Like it had nothing to do to progress the plot if we had just stayed in her POV the, POV the entire time it would have been a better book. Like, the men's POVs added literally nothing besides whininess to this. And I also um, maybe would have enjoyed this book more if I didn't have spoilers from what happens in next books because I wasn't, I didn't care about anything that happened in this book. And I think that's because I know things about the future plot. But it was cool to see because I know future things, you can definitely see that Sarah J. Mass leaves Easter eggs, which, because she's not a strong technical writer, I, I didn't expect that from her, but there are 100% Easter eggs in these two books for what is going to happen. So I'm still going to be continuing but like definitely this one the second one was a low three stars for me uh I didn't pick up any other books that month which normally I just have to binge read a series because I just get so addicted and this one really it took me a while to finish and slowed me down and I didn't want to pick up the next book right after that says a lot for me and next I read this was my chance card Legacy of Ash by Matthew Ward. This, yeah, this was my chance card for Bookopathon, the, the, like, just pick it up and it's, it's a book. And, um, this was so intimidating because it's dang chunky and I've heard no one talk about this book. I loved it. I gave it four stars and I cannot tell you why I didn't give it five stars because on reflection I freaking loved this book, but in my gut it wasn't a five star. Uh, I give out five stars. I'm, I'm harsher on five stars I think than any other, uh, but I gave it a good high four stars. I don't even know how to explain this book. Okay, this is a military fantasy. I, I honestly don't know how to describe this other than the Tristan Republic is falling and uh, there's war coming to its door and and the ruling families, instead of uniting against the war, are starting to plot against each other. And that's that's the best way to describe this. You follow three characters, Victor, who is the council's champion, and then you follow Jossery, who is a political prisoner because his mom uh, died in the last rebellion and she was the uh, leader of the rebellion. And then Celine, who is Joshri's younger sister, who just wants literally nothing to do with anything. <laughs> just wants her to be free of her family's name. And yeah, you just kind of follow the struggle that happens. That is the best way to describe this. Into my little review. I loved this book. From the very first chapter, you are just put into the middle of chaos. <laughs> like, like the action starts from the first page. And I loved that. It 
there is an expansive list of POVs and characters. Uh, so even though you're following the three main characters, you are reading the POV of, multi of many characters. It was a little confusing at first and it did take me a little bit to understand who everyone was, but once I knew who everyone was, where they were, and how they're related, I loved it and that only that only took me a little bit and there is like a a list at the beginning that has like who everyone is where they are and like how they're related to people kind of thing the character work in this is so compelling I loved and hated so many of these characters like I felt for every character there was no character that I was just like eh, about every character I either loved or hated this book revolves heavily around the religion and the lore in the world and so that was an amazing aspect to me because I felt like it was so unique but also so true to real so, like a, a like something that would be real and as in Throne of Glass, when I hated uh, that the POV changes rapidly, I loved rapid POV changing in this book. One chapter is filled with, like, there'll be a paragraph of someone's POV and then a couple paragraphs of another person's POV and then a couple pages of another person's POV and then you switch to another, back to, like, the first POV. And it, it all happens so quickly, but it engulfs you and it all makes sense. Like, one chapter has one plot point but different characters that's how and how they mesh to that plot point and it made it so fast-paced like this book is chunky but it didn't feel that way I, I went through it so quickly also my sister told me this doesn't matter but I think it does every chapter starts on the left uh, starts on this side so this is blank and uh, it's like a little just like quote from a book in the world. Like it's a quote from the world. And then you have this page blank again and the chapter starts. And so I think that brings a page count up because there are a lot of chapters in here. Like I'm on 36 right now. So this book is not as big as you think it is. Me trying to convince you that it's not chunky so you can pick it up. This if you like a military fantasy, you'll 100% like this. There is a battle scene that's a good, like, 150 pages in here. And it's it's one battle. And I loved that it wasn't just, like, over and done with. You saw the itty, like, the gritty parts. And it was 150 pages of necessary. And it wasn't just battle. Like, it wasn't just, like, blood and gore. It was the plot driving them. How a character reacts when something happens. And it was so intense. I loved this. Oh my gosh, maybe I should give it five stars. I also loved that I had to Google words. There were so many words in this that I was like, I think I know what that means, but I don't 100% know what that means, so I'd Google it. Like, I was learning. Yeah. And I fell in love with Victor Akadra. That's all I gotta say. Like, and Anastasia. Anastasia is the heart of this book. Um, if you haven't read this, please read it. Like, I know it's chunky, but please read it. It's only a trilogy. Like, there's three books that are about the same size, but it's just a trilogy. Read it. And then I read my buddy read for the month, which we didn't end up buddy reading because we kind of failed at that. But I read Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. This is the second, this is the first book in the second trilogy in the Realm of the Elderlings. I loved this. It also got four stars from me. Um, Robin Hobb is a masterful writer. She creates a story and just like, I don't know what, but there's like a neat, there's like a thread going through the story and connecting every little piece of detail. Like, I feel like every word matters and it's, it's incredible and it's such a great art th that someone has. And yeah, this, this, I, I honestly have no really negative thing. And while I'm on it, I'm just going to say that I read the whole series this month. After this, I read Mad Ship and then I read Ship of Destiny. Uh, the first two books got four stars from me, and the last got five stars. I loved it. Even though the series got less five stars than the Far Seers, I think I gave the Far Seer five stars all around. I enjoyed the series more because I love a multi pov book, and I loved the world in this more. Uh, the Far Seer trilogy is very character-driven, and I can't, I won't lie, this is also very character-driven, but there's a lot more world-building in this. I just going back to that needle and thread there are so many connections throughout this whole book like the reason I love this one is seeing how everything has come together including things that happened in the far zero trilogy how it's just like all connecting and everything's making sense I I couldn't get over that and I thought that was so good and if you don't know I can describe the live ship traders. The live ship trader series is about ship. You're following the Vestra family and they purchased a live ship when they were younger, like three generations back. And with a live ship, once three generations of your family member die on its deck, it 
quickens and it comes to life. And you're just following the Vestra's journey of the live ship coming quickening and how um, Elfia, who is one of our, I think she is our main character, but she's one of them, thought she'd be the captain and her father did not leave her in charge. And it's really just a struggle about how she should have been left in charge and what happens after that. And it's great. It's literally great. That's like, doesn't do justice to the what the rest of the series is, but that's like, I can give it to you without spoiling it. Yeah, so those were the last books I read this month, and I loved them. So I had a wonderful reading month, and I'm all ready, because it is September. Is it? It is October, and it's not on my TBR, but I am reading the next book that is in the third trilogy. <sighs> okay, that's it. That was my reading month, and it was great. Like, three, four stars out, two, three stars out, and a five star out. Oh, we have two five stars out. Incredible incredible month and I hope October is just as good. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far and you just want to leave a comment down below to say that you're watching, you can leave me what emoji? Um, leave me a car emoji. Why not? I don't know why I picked a car, but that's, that's what I picked. Maybe I should have said a boat because I read Ship of Destiny. Would have made more sense. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Uh, make sure to give this video a big old thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And comment down below. I'd love to chat with you about any of these books. And any books that you are reading in your, Oct in your October TBR or books that you read in September. I don't know. This was kind of a mashup comment. Um, anyways, yeah. Have a wonderful day. I'm going to leave some videos on the screen that I think you would like. And it would be amazing if you checked them out. Have a wonderful day day and I'm just gonna sit here and mumble a little bit so um, the videos show up for a decent amount of time. Bye!